Hello, everyone. Um, we've got about another minute before we get started with tonight's webinar. Um, let me know if you cannot hear me talking right now. All right. Looks like we've got about 13 people joining us tonight. So um, we'll go ahead and get started right on time. And by the time I get uh, through all the stuff I need to get through, um, hopefully we'll have a few more people join us as well. So hello and welcome to Champaign Public Library Crafty Adults Program. Um, excuse me, my name is Trisha Duzan and I'm the Adult Services Manager here at Champaign Public Library. Um, Crafty Adults is one of our more popular series here at the library, so thanks for joining us tonight. Um, each session focuses on a different creative project that we usually can complete in about one hour, so that's our goal. Um, so, oh, good. Nice to uh, see we've got several family members joining at, at one home. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, just to kind of go over some things tonight, we have an instructor, Molly Hatch who is teaching us how to create paintings using found images. Um, and I, I think this will make more sense once we get started. Um, I know it did for me. Um, but we're going to use our online tool, Creative Bug. So we're going to stream Molly's brief tutorial video. Then our own Rachel Woolley will walk you through the project in real time. Um, Rachel is part of our adult services team and was able to step in for our regular instructor, Laura Rice, um, who was unable to attend tonight. So a huge shout out and thank you to Rachel for uh, doing this. So we really are appreciative. Um, before we get started, I'm just gonna go over a few um, housekeeping items um, regarding Zoom and just some general information. Um, we are open to the public. We do ask that you wear masks inside the building and we are open regular hours once again. So nine to nine, Monday through Thursday, nine to six on Friday and Saturday, and 12 to six on Sunday. So getting back to a little bit more normal hours and everything in operations. So um, let's see, general Zoom information. Um, raise your hand if you need more assistance so I can enable your, your mic so you can ask a question if need be, um, and, or you can always use the chat. So the chat, um, it looks like everyone's pretty familiar with that and that seems to be working well. I am not able to see the video. Um, okay, sometimes, Janet, I see your question. Um, so you're not seeing me um, in my office right now. Um, if that's the case, perhaps change your view. All right, so if you go to your view, um, Sorry, I've got too many screens and too many options open myself. So see if you have view up at the top right of your screen, and if you can change that to um, speaker, or you may have gallery checked. And Janet, I can do some offline troubleshooting with you and, and get to you in chat also, so we can focus on that. All right, let me see what I can figure out for you, Janet. And um, if we have time at the end, I know sometimes we've done some shared videos and showed our content. Okay, that sounds good too. Always restart is a great way to, to figure it out. Um, so, you know, please use the chat feature. I will be monitoring that while Rachel is conducting the class. So, um, you know, feel free to put something in there and I'll try to keep up with that as best we can. Um, without any more introduction or details, I will go and pass this off to Rachel. So, um, Rachel, go ahead and turn your camera on, and then I'm going to spotlight you. Hello. And I'm going to go off. On. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Crafty Adults, our found image painting session. Um, again, as Tricia said, um, my name is Rachel Woolley. Laura couldn't be here, so I stepped in for her tonight to uh, demonstrate our project for you. Um, she did create an example 
before she left. So I do have one of her examples to show you along with mine so you can get an idea of what's possible with this project. Um, the first thing I wanna do is kind of introduce Creative Bug to you. It's one of our newest databases um, through the library website that you have access to for free with your library card. And I believe Urbana has access to that as well. So if you happen to be an Urbana patron, you can use it through their website too. Um, we'll watch the video by Molly Hatch who, um, has put together her process for uh, found image painting. And if you feel comfortable and you wanna get started and work along with her as she demonstrates, you're welcome to. But if you'd prefer to wait and watch the video on your own and then do the project with me afterward, that works as well, because I'll be doing it in real time, like Trisha said. Um, so yeah, after the video is over, I'll switch over to my camera and I'll walk you through the project with the materials that we have, which are slightly different from the material list that's in the creative bug um, tutorial, but that's okay, we're gonna make it work. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see that. Let's go here. Okay, and Trisha, I just wanna confirm that you can see the library webpage now. I can't. You can or you cannot? I can, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. So um, once you're, and you don't have to try to follow along with this now, because like I said, I'm gonna stream the video for you right through our Zoom meeting here. So you don't have to try and figure this out now. I just wanna give you an idea of where this lives and what you can do with it um, once we wrap up here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to eLibrary right here on the blue menu bar and click on that. And then the nice thing is because Creative Bug is one of our current highlighted kind of um, resources we have, you can just click on that image. That'll take you to Creative Bug, give you a little explanation of what it is, and then just click Use Creative Bug. Now, in my case, I've already logged in. So as you can see, it's welcoming me back. But when you first sign up, you'll see here in this area, there'll be just a little form to fill out um, to create a login to be able to get onto Creative Bug and use the classes. And there's all kinds of good stuff on here. Um, if you just hover over classes at the top here, I keep pointing at my screen like you can see what I'm doing. Where my mouse is here, where it says classes, if you hover over that, you can see we've got um, art and design, sewing, quilting, paper, all kinds of different categories. And then if you move to one of these, you can see even more of the different classes that they offer. Um, let's just click on painting here. It's gonna come up and show you all the different types of painting classes they have. It gives you ratings. I think you can sort somewhere if you prefer classes for beginners. Um, let's just go ahead and click on one here. So the nice thing about these two is if you're just browsing and you're like, I don't have time to do this right now, but I wanna remember to come back to it, you can build yourself a watch list by clicking this button here. And I'll just do that now to show you. And then it will save it for you so that you can come back to it later. And then they also have transcripts for each video. They have a materials list here. So you can click on this and see what you need before you start the class if you wanna follow along. And then yep, right down here, it tells you that this is good for beginners and it gives you kind of a description of the class. So, and then of course you can search and filter for classes that you're interested in as well. So I'm gonna go to my watch list, which I got to by just clicking over by my little R here. My watch list, and you can see the one I just added is here too. And then here is the one that we'll be watching today with Molly. And then just to give you a brief kind of explanation of Molly and her background, um, she is a very, at least by my terms, a very successful artist and designer. Um, she creates everything from fabric patterns to furniture, jewelry, prints, um, drawings and paintings. And she has exhibited her work internationally. She also has a line of housewares that she launched through um, the retailer Anthropology starting in 2011. And she's continuing to develop new products with them. She's also working on her first book. Um, she does have other classes here on Creative Bug in painting or drawing. So if you're interested in, in what you see here, or if you like the class that you see here, you can find more by her on here just by searching for her name. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We'll watch the video. Like I said, we'll watch it all the way through. If you feel like you want to start working on your project along with her as she shows you, feel free. But don't feel like you have to because we'll go through it again in real time afterward. So let me go ahead and play this and make sure that the sound comes through OK. One of my favorite ways to create an image is through the use of collage. So through found imagery, things that you find out in the world, and the use of collage and assemblage of a new image, you can create a painting or a drawing without the stress of having to know how to paint or draw. So there are two parts to creating a found image painting. The first is collecting the imagery that you're going to use to assemble the image that you're going to transfer. And I always love to go to history for source material. So in gathering that imagery, I often look to websites like Graphics Fairy or um, any sort of copyright free source materials like Dover Books are really great too. And um, I also look online at a lot of museum uh, websites. So a lot of collections are online now and you can print out like even like this. It's a really great toile fabric that I found at the Victoria and Albert Museum collection. So you can um, use anything you want and especially if it's for a personal image, um, something that you're not going to use or sell commercially, you can make anything out of even contemporary non-copyright free imagery, you just can't sell it. So if you want to sell something and you know you want to put it in your Etsy shop or whatever you want to do, you need to know that you have to use copyright free imagery or found imagery that's over you know a certain age. And the image that I created today was from a combination of sources. This herald I found on an old potter's mark, which is a really exciting place for me as a potter uh, to find source imagery. And then I also found the text uh, on font space, which is a great resource for finding new fonts. The other materials you're going to need today to make this image are serol wax-free transfer paper, which is great because you can erase it, drafting tape or washi tape that doesn't stick to the paper. It's really great to have something that you can lift up and move around because it's not really a traditional collage process. So you can change things around as you're drawing and washi tape is really great. It lifts off the paper without ripping. The other thing that you uh, want is a selection of uh, paint brushes and I tend to use round brushes or script brushes. Um, the round brushes are really nice to get a varied sort of calligraphic line but you can use any brushes you want. And I tend to use watercolor brushes because we're using gouache, which is similar to watercolor, but I will talk about the differences later. Um, but you can use any gouache you'd like. There's tons of different kinds and you don't need anything expensive or fancy. You can just start out with a basic set. The paper I use is often smooth and not toothy. So it's nice you don't get a lot of um, interruption when you scan it as a digital image, but you can also use watercolor paper. It works just as well. Uh, scissors and an exacto knife for cutting, an eraser, and a white eraser is pretty important because you want to make sure that you're not going to leave any marks on the paper. A pencil, and I prefer mechanical pencils, they tend to give you a cleaner line. An exacto knife, also for assembling. And then finally, I have an Amico T3 stylus tool, which is a really great stylus tool for transferring the imagery. And then because we're painting water and a paper towel. Once you're ready to start and you have all, all of the images that you've gathered that you want to make your assemblage from to transfer, you can go ahead and start collaging like you would in scrapbooking or any, any way you would normally put together an image. And what's great about this process is that you can take images from all kinds of sources, especially copyright free sources like I mentioned earlier, and put together a new image using those found images. So I have this Harold that I really like that I blew up from a found potter's mark and I thought it would be really fun to take it out of context and make it bigger um, and more of a signage or a crest. And I'd like to play around with the idea of putting the bird and maybe um, this text that I found on font space and print it out in multiple different ways. So I'm going to cut and assemble an image so that I can use that to transfer. I'm just going to try to cut loosely. I know that, um, you know, in creating a finished collage, you want it to look really um, clean and cut 
particularly, but you get to choose what image you're going to transfer. So you don't have to be as particular in this process about what you cut out. I'm going to play with that. I'm going to give myself that bird there. And I know I want this text in there too. So I'm going to cut that out and also leaving a little bit of extra room around the edge so that I have something to tape it down with. So get rid of the scrap. And then placement is kind of a large part of this. Um, I'm going to pl play around with, you know, the text could be inside the image or outside the image of the crest. Or the bird could be resting on one of these little laurels. That's kind of fun. But I think this would be kind of fun as just a sign. So I'm going to take the bird out, actually, and I'm going to put this together using a little bit of washi tape for placement. It's really exciting to use the washi tape because, or drafting tape because you can always lift it up and change that placement around. So unlike a normal collage, you want to actually do the placement so that you can move things around and change your mind because you can always erase the serral paper after. In this case, I'm pretty excited about the placement, so I'm going to leave this corner taped down and lift up one edge to keep the placement. And because I'm going to photocopy this, I want it to be a little le like the washi tape is going to be on there as an image, so I don't want to transfer that. So I'm going to hide it behind and fold over the tape so it's double sided and like sticky double sided tape. And then I have my placement. So this is what my photocopy looks like of this piece, and now I'm ready to transfer. So now you're going to take the paper and place it facing down, sandwiched between the photocopy and the white paper that you're going to transfer onto. And you just want to make sure it's centered enough and make sure that it's big enough to cover the image that you're going to transfer. And then I use a little bit of the washi tape or the drafting tape to place that and secure it on the paper so it doesn't move around and you misregister your drawing if you ever want to look at it in the process. So I'm going to do that. And it's, again, it's nice because the washi tape will come up and it won't rip the paper. So the next step is transferring. You just want to use your tool. The Amico T3 stylus tool is something I came across when I was using it in ceramics and then had to learn how to transform the process that I was using in ceramics to illustrate on paper. And I wanted to keep the same line quality that I was using in clay on, on paper. So this was just a natural segue, um, same, used to use the same tool from one process to the other. And I discovered that it worked just as well. So there's two points on the tip, a small one and a slightly larger one. Both work just fine. You don't have to feel like one or the other is better, but I tend to prefer the smaller one because I can get a finer detail in the transfer. You start transferring the image by placing the stylus tool over the line work in your photocopy. And by putting enough pressure to transfer the image through the paper, you can trace the entire image and if you're not sure how much pressure to use, you can always check underneath by lifting up the washi tape on one side. So you can see that it can transfer pretty strong with not a ton of pressure. It's great because you can even transfer through several pieces of paper, depending on how thick your original collage is or ideally you're using a photocopy. So when I'm tracing, I often don't fill in the area here. I just use an outline with the, pen, uh, with the transfer tool so that you can leave that place open for later when you want to decide whether to fill it in with a color or leave it as just line work. You can continue tracing your image until the entire image is transferred onto the paper behind. Okay, and I think I'm done tracing. So now I can pull up the top image and the serral transfer paper to reveal the image below. To start painting, you need to set up your palette with the colors that you choose and get out your brushes and get out just a little bit of paint. So you can see here that I've got just small daubs of the paint colors that I'm choosing to use. 
What's great about gouache is that you can leave it overnight and work on it multiple days in a row because you can add water and reactivate it at any time. Before I move on and start painting, I'm gonna clean up the image a little bit. There's a few places that I don't really want the red mark. So I'm gonna use the eraser that I have uh, to go through and just clean up some of those pieces. Okay, that looks great. So now I can wipe off any of the rubbings from the eraser so they don't get stuck in the paint and I can start painting the piece. So using your brush, you can blend the colors on your palette very similarly to watercolor. And I'm going for sort of a turquoise. And I'm gonna do larger areas of color first and then go in with the black line after. So you can see that the red line stays underneath the painting. And where you paint over the red line, you're not gonna be able to erase necessarily later. So be aware of that because where you have the lines, you'll probably wanna go over them with another color that's stronger. And gouache is great. You can even do line work with colors that are not just black because it's matte and very opaque. And so you can layer things in a really different way than watercolor. Okay, so the blue wash is done and I can now move on to another color. Um, and just, I kind of go over the lines until, or over the wash until I know that I've got the color, the saturation that I want and everything. And you can just keep building up layers over time. So now I wanna do a yellow and I'm gonna kind of do the background area behind the best. So I'm gonna get a larger brush for the yellow. Just add water until I have it the way I want it. And do a wash of yellow in that central area behind the text. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to work on the lining of the, the edges of the image with the black using a smaller brush. So following the red using a wash, I'm going to use it a little bit thicker and go over all the lines that I don't want to see later from the red transfer. So just to remind you that wherever you don't go over the red line, as long as it's still on the white paper, you can erase it. But if it's underneath a wash, you won't be able to erase it and you wanna make sure you go over that with another color that's thick enough to hide the red line or go over it with a black line. Now that the yellow's dry, I can go over the letters with black. And I think it's good to know that I'm kind of excited about the hand quality of the lettering and the drawing in general. It's not a perfect tracing. I'm not aiming to copy what was there. I'm aiming to translate it through my hand. So I think it's good to remind yourself that you aren't perfect and that it's really easy to get stressed out about making something exactly the way you have it in your mind's eye and just let it be a part of you know, something that you've done by hand. So allow yourself to go ahead and do the painting with your hand quality. So now the line work is done on the lettering and because I've been working on that, the outline is dry and I can go back in with the eraser and erase any red marks that are not painted over on the white paper. So as you're erasing, you might pick up some of the gouache that you've painted down. And if you pick up more than you like, you can always go back over the gouache and make it a more saturated black. But it's nice to know that you can erase it and be pretty aggressive with the eraser. The other thing to take note of is that not all the red comes off all the time and it's just part of your image. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you really don't like it, you can make sure that you do make a very exact line when you're tracing so that you don't have to worry about erasing so much and go over that line with a good thick black or another color. Erasing can take a little while, but it's worth doing because you can get rid of a lot of the, black, uh, the red line that's left from the tracing. And I wanted to share with you an image that I had completely erased. And then I actually went over the image again because I picked up a lot of the black line when I was erasing. So the black has been gone over once more and you can get a lot more saturated line when you do it that way. And this is frame ready. So you could hang this on your wall, put it in a frame that you purchased somewhere or get it framed professionally. I wanna share with you some other images that I've done in the same process. I started with this collage of a bike from a vintage uh, calendar 
and a frame from a typography book and then also some text from font space and I collaged all those together and then transferred them to the same kind of paper and painted it in using the same technique that we just did and even some of the same colors and now I have this fun poster that's inspirational. Okay, that was our creative bug found image painting class by Molly Hatch. Um, are there any questions so far before I move on to the live demonstration? It looks like the chat's pretty quiet. I know Trish has been keeping up on that. Well, um, I'm just accidentally responding incorrectly in chat to the wrong folks. So I appreciate you, <laughs> everyone, letting me push put random posts in there when I didn't mean to. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, so oh, I just see a chat in here um, wondering if the paint is water-based. Um, gouache, I believe, yes, it is because it activates with water. And then, yeah, as Molly said, when it dries out, um, you can just add water to it on your palette to reactivate it. So it's not like acrylic, which I think is, well, acrylic-based or oil paints, um, which are waterproof when they're dry. But yeah, so the acrylic, or I'm sorry, the gouache is is water based and much more user friendly that way. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our camera. This will take a few seconds just to make that transfer, um, and then I can start this demonstration for you. Um, so my list is a little out of focus here. You guys should all hopefully have a copy of this. So if you can't read it perfectly here. Um, Hopefully you have a copy in front of you. Um, I did want to point out a few differences in some of the materials. Let me, that still looks like it's fuzzy. Um, we do have, um, you'll have your gouache paints, hopefully in a couple different colors. Your, um, we have one brush. Um, instead of doing the black gouache outline, we, um, I have a Sharpie, I, any, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here for you. Any black pen or marker will work um, depending on how you, when you choose to do your outline. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. But um, the other big difference is the stylus that she recommended. We're just gonna go ahead and use a pen um, just to draw around the outline with our pen. Um, and I, I think there's a little bit of an advantage to using a pen over a stylus, which is that you can see the lines that you already did without having to lift up your transfer paper as often. Um, and then we're not, you don't have to worry about having a copier because of course we'll just collage and then transfer right from the um, collage to your found or to your white paper. So a uh, word to about the transfer paper. It does, it's not the serial paper that she uses in the video, but it still does a really good job. Um, and just so you know, the, the dark side is gonna go down. This is the graphite, the transfer side of it. So when we're ready to transfer, we're gonna put that down onto our white page um, to, to do the transfer. So let me go ahead and show you. So Laura and I both did kind of a, our own version of this with some of the images in the kit. And um, this is hers. I'll go ahead and show you hers first. She did this really lovely purple and blue rose with uh, the best ribbon on it. And of course, I liked the ribbon and the rose so much that I went for the same thing. So I kind of did a different variation of that. Um, and then the everything is part I just hand wrote in myself with my marker because I thought, you know, like, like Molly says, and like Laura and I were talking, it's like having that sort of the little imperfections, the, the sort of handmade quality um, gives it more character. And it's, it's sometimes a lot more interesting than, you know, perfection. And really it's a trend right now. If you Google like watercolor trends, the, the imperfect character is really uh, popular right now. So and if you, you could just tell people that too. It's like, nope, that's how it's supposed to be. I did it that way on purpose. All right, so I have my cup of water here too. Got my paper towel. Um, my paint is ready on the tray. I'm probably gonna have to get some new paint because that dried out overnight, like she said. But um, you should also have various pages of 
pieces of imagery that we included that we can cut up and collage. And you can see I kind of cut some of mine up already to do my sample design. And I will go ahead and use that same design again tonight. But I just wanted to show you, it looks like I've got some duplicates here, but some of the things that you've got in there to play with. Um, I want to give you some time to cut some of those out and play around. I have some other pieces here. I was actually thinking maybe I would just try a different version of the painting because I have these other pieces that I've cut out already. But I will show you my demonstration with the piece that I already did. But go ahead and take some time to kind of just cut these out and, and rearrange them and, and find a a composition that you like and you, yeah the outline the cutout doesn't have to be perfect let me show you how I did mine um, I just cut like I left a bunch of the the white paper around the edges because that's not going to transfer into the finished drawing and then my letters I just taped down you can see just all in a row used a piece of tape on there and then the only part where I was more precise about cutting was right along here where I knew I wanted to see that line and how the rows lined up with that line. So everyone good so far? Let me know if I'm going too fast or if I get out of range of my camera. Well, and Rachel too, I want to give a general reminder and I, I think I usually mention this and I might have forgot to tonight is, you know, these are recorded. Um, they will be up on YouTube channel, um, hopefully by the end of next week. So if you get frustrated or you, you fall behind in a way that you're just, you, it's causing you stress, please don't get stressed. Crafting is not supposed to be stressful. Um, so you can always just pause and enjoy the rest of the video with us and then um, watch it at your leisure and follow along at your own pace. Because again, this is supposed to be fun. We don't want anyone stressed out. And um, so I think that's just important to keep in mind. Yes, thank you. That is a great point. Um, the other thing is I was going to mention, um, Molly gave a couple examples of some places to find free imagery. Um, we found a few more of those for you. And of course, I forgot to bring them here. But we will include them in the description on the YouTube video. So that if you, I mean, you can do a Google search for, for free images. But we also found a few places to get those for you. So to kind of highlight where I taped down. I just used a little bit of my masking tape, which I'll get out here, um, to kind of hold this together just enough so that it would lay flat in the composition that I wanted to. You don't have to go too crazy with the tape, just a little bit to get it to stay in place where you want to. And the other thing to know is I actually just cut down my transfer paper so it wasn't bigger than my um, paper that I'm transferring to because I know the sheets that we included are kind of big. So feel free to cut those down to whatever size that you want to. Um, the nice thing about this transfer paper too is like I used it to transfer once already for the example image that I did. But because there's so much of the dark um, graphite on here still, you can use this multiple times and it will give you a transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and just line this up. Um, I'm actually going to start here because I don't want any of the extra graphite to get onto my page. So I'm just going to put this on here. It doesn't really matter how it's lined up on there because again all that matters is the line that you're drawing when you transfer it to your page. So I just want to make sure this stays in place in a few spots so that it doesn't shift around on me while I'm transferring. Get another little piece of tape here for the other edge, and then that should be good. There we go. Okay, and then on my page that I'm transferring to, this is where I want to be a little bit more precise about where I want this to go on the page, because I do, I think I am going to keep it the whole page. Um, and of course, if I, if I do make it crooked, I can always cut my paper to, to be centered around the image, but I think that looks pretty close. We're going to call that good. And if I can find the edge of my tape again, there it is. I'm just going to pull a bunch off this time and tear that off so I can have it ready. I'm going to do a piece along the top here, I think, and then this long piece I'll just stick along the bottom here. That way I can kind of 
peek on the edges if I need to see underneath, but all right. So that's in place the way that I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and take my pen and start transferring that. So actually, I'm going to tape those letters down just because they're sticking up a little bit from where I drew on them yesterday. Just take a piece of this and fix it with that. And as you can see, the masking tape does come up pretty easily without tearing the paper underneath, which is definitely a bonus. What I like about this is you can reuse a lot of the pieces and so it's it's not you can use it for more than one project. Oh definitely yeah and like I could I could take this apart and if I wanted to use the rose with you know some other saying or if I wanted to do kind of the laurel leaves around it instead yeah you can reuse it many times. All right so I'm gonna just go ahead and get started right here in the middle. Um, I'm using a little bit firmer of a pressure than I would normally just to write, just to make sure that I'm getting the line to appear. Um, you don't have to push super hard. The paper is fairly sensitive. It will transfer pretty well, but I like to make sure it's going to be nice and firm lines. And then I'm going to, I'll lift this up just so you can kind of see what it's looking like down there. Yeah, that's a good dark transfer. So. I'll go ahead and smooth that back out and then I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. As uh, Rachel is doing her tracing, I will um, just say too, and I, I apologize if I missed this, Rachel, when you were going over the um, access to creative bug. Um, it is available both at Urbana and Champaign um, libraries. Um, and then I believe it's one of the databases that if you come into the library, you can use it um, within the walls of the library too. So um, we do have uh, several databases that allow that access to everyone. That's good. No, I did mention Urbana, but I wasn't sure. So I'm glad that you confirmed that because I, and, and I thought they had it too. I'm fairly confident in, in both those claims. Um, and if you have questions, you can always email us at info at champagne.org um, for any reference type questions or just general questions. Oops, I'm getting off the camera here a little bit. Let me see how I'm doing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. coming through good. Yeah, the only problem with using a stencil that I've already used is that there's pen all over every petal already, so <laughs> I don't know which one I did for this session, but I can keep peeking underneath and seeing. Well, it's all intentional, right? Of course. Well, and as I know Laura would say, it's like it does not have to be perfect. I sometimes struggle with remembering this, but yeah, it does not have to be perfect. Sometimes, you know, you don't have to copy this exact image. You do want to make it your own and give it your own kind of human touch, so. When I was joking with Rachel beforehand, I, I crafting is not necessarily in my um, wheelhouse of skills that I have. Um, it could be the attention that it takes um, or the just um, overall commitment to it, um, but sometimes it stresses me out. And I felt like this activity was very calming and soothing as I watched Molly um, show how to create this. It was um, unique to me. I wasn't familiar with this type of art project, uh, but I did. I do find the tracing very, very calming. It is like I am, I'm a person who does drawing and it's still, it's a nice kind of a, a break from having to be, you know, having to figure it all out for myself. And honestly, like when I was a kid and I was learning how to draw, I used to do a lot of tracing. And I think it does help you if it's your goal to become a better drawer. It doesn't have to be. You can just stick with the, the found images. But if you are interested in becoming a better drawer, I think it, it helps because you kind of learn, you know, how to form the lines that you see on the page. So let's see. I'm getting close here. Yeah, Kristen, the chat was mentioning that coloring has a simple, has a similar effect too. So, you know, finding those, those moments of joy and calm right now, um, I think is really important. So. Oh yeah. I was all about the adult coloring books for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I have a Doctor Who coloring book, but it's really intricate and like, no, some of them are, and it, it is, it's kind stressful. of stressful, like yeah. you said. 
because you have to find, you know, a pen or a marker that's fine enough to fit yeah. into those spaces. So how am I doing here? I got to do my letters still, but yeah, it looks like I missed a little bit right there. Let's see if I can line this back up right. I didn't tape that down very well, so might end up a little crooked underneath, but that's okay. Oh, super natural. That's speaking my language. I'm going to go ahead and get the letters in here. And again, I'm not going to be super precise with these letters. You mean you don't have to transfer every part of it. You see, like these have some fun kind of shadow effects to them. I'm not going to copy that over just because I am painting it with gouache and gouache is fairly opaque. But I do want to at least make sure I get my outline there. Well, Stacy mentioned in chat, that's a really good point too, is coloring books are a great resource for images. Oh, absolutely. Now, the only thing with those, of course, is that they are copyright. So um, if you're just doing this for yourself at home for your own enjoyment, then absolutely. Um, just don't try to sell those because they are under copyright. But that's that is that is a good point. Um, not all art has to be made to sell. You can just make it for fun or hang on your own wall. You know, that's exactly. It's a, a great point. Um, the Disney light up desk, tracing desk. That's that's fantastic. Um, I'm just reading through chat. Uh, Selkie was talking about she had the Disney light up tracing desk. I have the this is gonna this is gonna date me, but I have the um, the Barbie where you could change out her outfits and you could rub and create different outfits and patterns. Um, that was a big thing for me. <laughs> that sounds fun. I don't know if I had that, but that sounds like something I would have liked. Okay, so for some reason this is kind of dark, but let me show you. So I transferred my image. You can see there are a couple places where I didn't do a great job, but that's okay because I can see it well enough to paint it and that's the important part. And then with my eraser, so the thing about the transfer paper, and I think Molly was having the same issue with her serial paper, is that in these little spots here with your eraser, you can lighten them up. They're not going to come off all the way, but you can at least use the eraser. See, it's not quite as dark as it was. I mean, it looks like it is, but I promise you it lightened up a little bit. <laughs> Let me get these spots down here. So, all right. So there's my image. Yeah, it's it's the eraser. It's the It's the transfer paper. So it's not going to be a perfect erase, but it'll at least lighten it up. And once your paint and your outline is on there and is bright and colorful, those spots will be even less noticeable. So I am going to go ahead. So here is where you have a couple of options. Um, I know some people like to outline before they paint. And this is especially like if you're thinking about like that coloring book quality and you like that kind of bold line to be able to go and fill in with your paint like you're doing a coloring book, you can absolutely do that. Um, the one thing I would strongly recommend is that you use a Sharpie or some other pen that you know is waterproof because otherwise your paint and your water will smear that black ink. And that may not be the effect that you're going for. So do keep that in mind. Um, I'm actually gonna wait until the end of the painting to outline mine, which is what I did before, because I find that with um, when I outline after I paint, I can kind of cheat the lines a little bit and make it look a little crisper than it does when it's just painted. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some new fresh paint over near my dried out paint because that's what you guys are going to be working with and I want to show you kind of how what you have will work. I'm gonna, I ended up with some nice sort of fall colors in my kit so that's what I've got now and then you probably kind of saw how Molly was doing it. I guess my water doesn't really need to be in the picture here but um, you get your brush nice and nice and here we go, um, nice and wet. One thing to know, I'm just going to sit that there, I guess, and zoom out a little bit. Um, when you're dipping your brush in your water, you don't want the water to go up past this metal part here. Um, 
just because if it gets on the wood too much, it starts to ruin that wood and it can kind of ruin your your paintbrush. So, I mean, that's not, if you, if you dip it in there once or twice accidentally, it's not going to hurt anything, but just know that over time, you don't want to get your water too far up the line. But so I'm getting my brush nice and nice and wet here, lots of water. And then I just kind of start at the edge of where my paint is and I just kind of pull a little bit away and mix it in with the water here. And you can see how that's kind of lightening up compared to how opaque it is in the actual um, little pile of paint there that I created. So I've got some nice red on my brush. For painting, I typically like to kind of start in the top. I'm right-handed, so I typically like to kind of start in the top left and work my way down just so I'm not putting my hand in my own paint. But I mean, of course, you can always adjust the page as you need to. Um, let me try. Is that better or worse for I think, being able to see. Is that better? I think that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I just turned my little camera light on. So hopefully that'll, because I just want you to be able to see the lines as I fill them in. Um, in this case, I am going to start in the middle. I realize I'm totally contradicting what I just said, but um, starting in the middle and working out is another kind of thing that I like to do. And then, yeah, you can get with your brush, you can get a nice fine line if you use just the very tip along the edge there. Um, you can get a thicker line if you kind of angle it a little bit and um, put more of the, the brush onto your paper. So you can kind of see the difference in lines there. Here's a thinner one versus the thicker one that I was doing. And what I like to do, I because I work with watercolor so much normally, I like to try and blend my colors, um, which is what I did in my demo. And I'll show you what I how I did that. Um, so I want to do it while this is still kind of wet. I'm going to rinse my brush off really good to get that red paint out of there. And then um, I'm going to usually just kind of brush it a little bit on a piece of paper towel to make sure all that paint is out of there before I dip back in my water cup and do the same thing with my yellow to get some of that yellow paint. So I'm just going to get some of that yellow on my brush here. And then I will go in pretty much right next to the red and kind of let some of that yellow pull the red in. And I even, you know, dip the bristle into the red a little bit and that gets that kind of mixture going on here. So I'll dab some of that in there. Go over here. And if, if I get to a point where the red is kind of too dry, already, I can go and get more red paint too and just kind of work between the two colors until I get the blending the way that I want to. So that's actually blending really well. I like how that turned out. It's working even better than it did yesterday. Say it looks really pretty. Thank you. Um, there's a question in here. Can you add a different transfer after first paint is dry? And I'm sorry if you already talked about that and I missed it. Um, that is a good question. Are you like directly over the top of your painting? Um, or, I mean, of course you can around on the paper. I have not actually tried to, to add the transfer paper over the gouache. I think that you would get a transfer, but it might not be um, a clean transfer just because of the texture of the paint itself. Um, especially if you do a little bit of a thicker paint on the page. Um, so that would be something to experiment with, but I would definitely do a, a test piece before doing it on like a finished piece that you really like, because I think, yeah, the transfer might not be as clean as it was on just the blank smooth sheet. So I'll keep working in here. Um, and of course, if you are working on you know, one of the the shields or the crests or some image where you don't want the colors to blend, um, then you're going to want to make sure that your edge is dry or your paint is dry before you come in right next to it with your brush. And in that case, I would recommend kind of working, you know, do a little bit here, then maybe move down here, then work um, a little more all over to give your areas of paint time to dry before you add more right in next to it. And then let's see, 
I'll go, I'll start with some yellow this time and see, I don't want this red here to blend into this petal because I want it to be yellow in the center like I did here. So I'm actually going to skip that petal for now and come on over here and work on this big petal here. So that I can do the blending on the edge with the red here. I'm just going to rinse my brush in between to get that extra yellow out because I don't really want too much orange. A little bit of orange is okay, but I do want to make sure you can see that nice bright red along the edge here. And I'm really pushing this gouache to be sort of uh, transparent just because like I said watercolor is kind of the the one that I like to work in and you can make gouache kind of do that too but you the nice thing one of the kind of benefits about gouache is that you can make it um, very opaque you can make it look like acrylic um, and it's nice to um, when you have with watercolor you kind of have to work from from light to dark because if you paint light over dark it doesn't necessarily show as well but because the gouache is so opaque in its thicker form you can add in highlights later which is can be really fun so like i said if i get too much of this red going and i want it to go back to yellow i can kind of add that in on top and it'll show pretty well so, and here you can see I've kind of got the orange going on that I didn't want. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off. And then the other nice thing about water-based paints is if you just take your wet brush without any paint on it, I'm going to dry it off just a tiny bit on the paper towel so it's not saturated. But you can actually go in and kind of lift some of that paint back out if you end up with too much in one spot. See, so I got rid of some of that orange and got it back to yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep working on some of these. I'm going to do a check-in with everyone. Um, how are we feeling as far as the, the progress? Does anyone feel like this is taking a long time for them or they're really flying ahead of things? And Yeah, I definitely picked a style of blending that is a little more time consuming, but it looks I mean, very cool, though. It looks like a <laughs> thank you. A no, power and it's, on fire. <laughs> good tempo. Okay, that. Thank you, Janet. For excellent. That. Yes, yeah. that's good to know. Sometimes it's so hard to predict um, for the class, and and as uh, I know, Rachel said this is for beginners, which she um, told me so that I could do it. But um, still, still, you just never know once you get started on a project. I know, and so I was thinking, I was like, maybe I shouldn't have tried to do all the blending because it it is it takes a little more patience for sure, and a little more um, kind of practice and dedication. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with just having you know your your simple color. I mean, sometimes simplicity is absolutely perfect. So you get some more there. feedback that they're doing doing well with the pace, and then also. Um, some appreciation for being able to see the blending with this type of paint too. Because I I don't know for, about anyone else, but this paint um, is new to me. I wasn't uh, familiar with it, so. Um, I am also relatively new to this. I've definitely been doing watercolor a lot longer, but um, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that because yeah, it was one of those, the first things I was like, I'm gonna be really fancy and see how I can make this blend. Well, and with watercolor, I think so from my personal experience that it's um, a little trickier, or at least you're making this look much easier than what my experience with watercolor has been. Watercolor is tricky in that it is so translucent yeah. um, and transparent. And so, yeah, it's possible to get a thicker wash, but most of the time, and, you know, one of the reasons that watercolor um, people do choose watercolor is because you can layer it and have the the lower layers show through the the top colors but yeah that's not always what we want and gouache is a good kind of 
I like gouache as kind of a medium between acrylic because it's acrylic is messy and it takes it, yes it's, it involves you know a lot of setup and cleanup and this is just you you add some water and off you go so yeah. I don't know if you can see I am still just kind of dipping my brush on my paper towel to get that little bit of extra color out um, as I'm switching between the red and the yellow here. So, are we on time? Okay, I don't think I'm going to go through the whole rows right now just because I want to show you, um, I want to do, start on some of this so you can see how that's going to look and then show you how the outlining will look. But, so I'm going to back away from the rows for now and move on to the ribbon. Now with the ribbon I want to have a thicker kind of color, a more opaque color. So I'm going to do the same thing that I was and kind of pull some of it away from the main section of paint, but I'm going to leave it a little thicker. So I'm going to bring more of that paint and less of that water so that it's a thicker color. So that when I come in here, it's just nice and rich and red. So fill that in. And the thing about the gouache on this particular paper too is you can kind of see the lines from your strokes, which I think it can make kind of a neat effect. Um, I can show you on my example again. I kind of used that to make it, to give you kind of the texture of the ribbon and the folds there and add just a little bit of a shadow with a thicker color there. So that's kind of what I'm going for here too. Now the one thing to be a little careful of is it will, the thickest paint will cover up your transfer lines. So um, be careful of that too. I still feel like this is a little too washed out, but hopefully everybody can, can see what's happening here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's coming through well. Okay, good. So just a little tidbit of information, how this works is she can't really see what you're seeing. So she's only working on uh, the canvas and then hoping that it comes across on the camera. So uh, she's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I do have, for this, I can, I can see um, my screen. When I shared the screen with the website, that's the part I can't see. So, okay. <laughs> but it's still, yeah, I'm, I'm going back and forth a little bit from my page and the screen. So whatever feedback you have is great because that helps me kind of adjust as I go. So yeah, and here I didn't do a great job transferring the letters, but I can kind of see well enough to kind of fill that in. So, and again, it doesn't have to be exactly like the original. Give it a little um, bit more. But. I, I'm surprised by how far the gua sha paint, like it goes, like it didn't look like, even in her demo demonstration, I'm like, that is not enough paint to do what she's going to do, but it definitely goes a lot further. Oh, it does. Yeah. it. That's one of the other nice things about it is you're absolutely right is I just got a little dab of it and yeah, it goes, especially when you add the water because you're kind of diluting it with the water and it's still so bright and thick, but yeah. All right. Get a little bit more water here so I can make a little bit more of my paint mixture here. Yep. That I put on a little bit too thick, but the nice thing is, is I can just keep spreading it around <laughs> until it gets completely intentional. Definitely. <laughs> I'm going to use that in other things too. All right. And I, this may or may not seem obvious, but of course the places where you've got that paint on thicker and more opaque are going to take a little bit longer to dry. So be mindful of that as you're moving it around and as you're touching it and Does it smear it pretty easily? Like if you, you know, drag, kind of accidentally drag your hand? Um. 
it depends on how wet or dry it is. I'll just, yeah. so here it's still pretty wet and yeah, yeah, you can see it smears pretty good. And I mean, hey, maybe that's an effect that you want to go for because that looks kind of cool actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, as it's drying, it is pretty sensitive to the touch, so. Now I have gouache on my finger. I'm going to have to be careful yeah. not to put that anywhere else. <laughs> Sorry, I need you, need you test it out. No, it's great. I am happy to be the guinea pig. That is what I'm here for. I know I was admiring um, in the video, Molly's uh, nails matched the project that she was doing, which I thought well, that was really well done. I, I bet that was probably on purpose. It probably was intentional <laughs> as well. But still, one of those details that makes the video. Yeah, there's so many things on creative books. If you if you are um, watching and have access to it, I encourage you to, to get on there and check all that's out. How do you keep, so a question just came in from Chris. How do you mm -hmm. keep the red paint from covering the black line so the folds are still obvious? So I believe, do you know what she's speaking to? I think she's talking about yeah. over here, right? Yeah. Um, what I did, so I actually did end up covering up my line. I don't know if you can really tell, but what I did is I actually put the paint on a lot more thickly right there to make it look like it's a little bit darker. And then when I do this next piece, which I'll actually just go ahead and do that now, I'm going to start with a little bit more water in the paint so that it's a little bit lighter because this is dry now. So it's not going to blend over when I paint this, if I'm careful about not overlapping too much, I'm going to turn it upside down so I can paint it a little bit easier. But so when I do my next line, Line, I'm going to add more water to it so that I can kind of see the distinction. Oh, um, so, sure. You can. Yep, see, yeah. and then, yeah, there's a little white gap in there. I'm going to leave that because when I do outline it afterward, that's going to kind of guide me on where to go. And then it's going to hide that when I put the marker over it. So. Great. Chris says, thank you. That was helpful. You're welcome. Yep. And I'm going to add a little bit more of the paint less diluted on the edge here so I get that kind of shadow effect again. A little bit more because I think I want it to be a little bit darker. And I'm going to let that dry and move back over to the other side and do the same thing. I apologize, you can't really see how I'm working with the paint here, but if anyone has any questions about that, let me know. I think they're all working very diligently on their projects. And if anyone... Gets, I hope so. That's great. <laughs> and if anyone gets theirs finished, uh, let me know in chat and we can always share screens if we have uh, time. Uh, yeah, I would love to see what you guys have come up with. I feel like I'm just kind of copied Laura with the rose because I, I love flowers. I'm a flower person. I, I paint a lot of flowers when I do watercolor. So, of course, when I saw the rose, I was like, yes, I want to use that. Well, Dee's comment uh, that the brush, thank you, Dee, uh, really likes the brush. She says it practically paints itself, so it's working very well for her. That's good. Yeah, these are nice. I mean, just from my own personal opinion, the, the Princeton brushes are really, they're a really good brand. They gave us some good quality supplies. So thank you to yeah. Art Coop for putting these kits yeah. together for us. Yeah, that was so handy. Um, yeah, if you didn't know, Art Coop was able to put supplies for us together and um, it was really helpful. Thank you, Selkie. Yeah, and here I ended up just leaving a little bit more of the white space um, in between my section so I know exactly where to put that marker later but you don't have to you can just do the shading or the other I mean you can kind of follow the line around and see where it would be if you end up covering it up you can just follow your outline and kind of see where it might naturally fall or you can create a new a new outline some sharing of some love for art coop in the in the chat I am a big fan of their pens my staff knows that <laughs> if there is a gel pen laying around with some unique animal on the top of it, that is mine, most likely. I love, they have like the, they usually put them outside the store in kind of that um, main mall area, the, the racks of all the different interesting papers, Beautiful the printed paper, papers. Yeah. Yes. 
I do some bookmaking as well, like hand handbound books, and they're so good for covers. They make such interesting and pretty covers. Of course you do. I this is the most craftiest artistic <laughs> staff I've ever worked with. Um, so I <laughs> I am in awe and appreciation of of their talents. I just am curious about a lot of things, so I try a lot of things. <laughs> Okay, so the lettering is done. So once that dries, I can kind of show you what the outlining technique looks like, at least for the way that I decided to do it for waiting until the end here. Let me get this last piece of ribbon. Yeah, I still, I just put not even a quarter sized bit of gouache on there and I still, this is the old, the old bit that's dry, but this is the part that I still have left. So it does go a long way. Stacey, you're asking if there's classes on creative bug for kids as well. I believe there is. And, and if you just bear with me, I actually was checking out classes um, while this is happening um, because they have everything from sewing, knitting, so many, it's such a variety. Yeah, that's a good question about the kids' classes. Yeah. I would think at the very least there are some that uh, that children could easily follow along with, depending that's, on kind of the age and... And they do actually, yes, they have a whole section on, in kids. It's the very far right, there's a drop down that says kids and they've got it um, segmented out for like five years and up, eight years and up, um, Creative Bug Live, so they have live classes. They have different crafts for kids, daily practice, drawing and painting, holiday, jewelry, paper, sewing, yarn. So they really do, they've got it covered. Maybe that's what I should start with. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with starting easy. Oh yeah, you love to do crafts with your grandkids. That's a great idea. And it's always nice to have, like when you're doing that, cause I can remember doing when my kids were little and I had good intentions and then let's just say it didn't always go as planned or, or the instruction from me was not great. So having that guiding tool and then you can follow them along and then do it at your, you know, stop it, pause it and catch up, I think is a yep. really, really great resource. Being able to rewind a little bit. And, and to have... listen to that person better than they will you, right? <laughs> I, I, was, I may be speaking for myself, but I feel like that's the case. So because we have a little more time, I'm going back to my rows, kind of starting on this nice big petal here to see if I can fill more of that in. And I waited too long and I let that red dry, but that's okay, because I'm just gonna come back in with some more of it. So can you add, I just say, can you add a little bit of water to that and kind of blend that more? Yep, you can kind of see, actually, I'm already, because my brush was wet with the yellow, it's starting yeah. to kind of smear that red. Yep, so you can. And that's actually, that's blending not too bad. So I'm just going to kind of cheat and wipe that extra off with my fingers here. And you can, if you end up getting, you know, paint somewhere where you really didn't want it. Um, if you go in with your clean brush and kind of add that water, um, I'm off the screen a little bit here. I messed up and got a little bit out here. So I'm going to just add a little bit of water there and see how it's kind of coming up. It came up a little bit. Kind of oh. disappeared. Yep. And then I, you can just take the edge of your paper towel and kind of dab it. And then it's not 100% gone, but it does get rid of most of it. And so now when I paint over that with my yellow, you're not going to be able to even tell that it was there. So that's another nice thing about these water-based paints. So go over that with that yellow. And then I'm going to bring some more red back in to blend that up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to come in with a brush with no paint on it to kind of blend this red that I just stuck in right here. 
So, yeah, that's coming along all right. I want to darken some of this yellow in too. Because, yeah, the nice thing, I mean, with gouache is you can kind of layer it over. And so I just made this, this yellow a little bit darker now so that it matches the rest of what I've got going here. And then I will go ahead and move to this top petal here and I'll fill that in. And then I think I'll go ahead and start showing you how I would outline this. Just so you get a chance to see that too. And I don't think, last time I painted my yellow, my letters in yellow, but I think I'm gonna leave them white this time because I think I like the way it looks with the red ribbon. And I, I don't know how well you can tell here, but of course the red does cover up the, the graphite. So some of the shapes of my petals are changing a little bit from what I originally started with, but I think that's all right. I mean, the nice thing about flowers and, and roses and other kind of organic shapes is that if you don't get them exactly right, they're still gonna look natural because every rose is different. Every flower is different. The petals are all different shapes. You don't have to be extremely precise with how you shape those when you when you paint them in so and the nice thing about these flowers is your cat won't eat them <laughs> well, well I guess they could. <laughs> you, you know what i take it back i guess they could but um it, it won't hurt make, them it won't hurt them it won't make me won't, won't make them sick well i just Not that I'm don't experience or anything <laughs> I just decided that this red edge was a little too light for what I wanted, so I just went back in and added some more. And then now I'm going to go in with a clean brush and blend that edge just a little bit. And the other thing too is I'm kind of working along next to, the, like I'm using the same stroke direction with the red and with the yellow. But the other thing you can kind of do, and I have a clean brush here again, is you can kind of pull the paint this way as well and see how it's giving it a little bit different of a texture. So you can see how it kind of changed the texture by changing my direction here, but it still is blending the two colors together. So you're still getting that blended effect, just kind of with a different textured look to it. So that's kind of another trick that you can try. All right, so. I'm going to leave the rose to dry now, and I think, yeah, this is pretty dry. So the one of the tricks you can kind of use to tell if it's dry or not is when the paint is still wet, it's pretty shiny, but when it's dry, it definitely has more of a matte look to it. So when it has, when it's got that fully matte look to it, then you know that you can start touching it and drawing on it. So clean my brush off and set that aside. And then zoom out just a little bit. So I'm using a Sharpie because it happens to be what I had here. Um, it's got a thicker line and I, I wasn't sure how I would feel about the thicker line when I did my demonstration, but I actually think it looks like it really kind of made the whole thing look a lot more cohesive, especially since I didn't paint my leaves at all. Um, but you can use a thinner Sharpie. You can use um, if you're, if you like fancy pens, or if you want a trip, or a reason to go to Art Coop, there's um, another brand called Micron. They're by Sakura. Uh, Micron pens. Those are really nice pens for drawing and for um, outlining artwork. And those are waterproof as well, which is really nice. So if you want to do your inking before you do your painting, they will stay in place. So I'm just going to. I think I'm going to start with my letters. And so I'm just going to kind of, I'm holding, I'm going to hold it upright because that's where kind of the finer tip is because I don't want the line to be too thick. And I'm just going to go right along that edge where the paint and the marker or the paper meet, the red and the white. 
And as you can see, like this line here is not, I didn't do a great job making it completely smooth, but if I just kind of draw over where that meets with my marker, now it looks like it was smooth the whole time. So you can kind of kind of blend a little bit with your pen by where you place your, your line. You got a little room for error, which is nice. For exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's a good way to put it. And do you think you would want, because I'm admiring your flower work, um, will you want to trace around your flower? Um, I did with the other one. I wasn't sure at first and then... I guess you did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it this can do one, either way, right? Yeah. I mean, you can change yeah. the whole look of it. Um, I, like I said, I ended up doing the outlining of the flower just because I thought it kind of brought the whole thing together with the ribbon and um, with my little hand lettering up here that I just stuck in there. But I really did, I debated and I think, you know, maybe with this one, I might not outline the flower. I might just outline my ribbon. When it really gives it a different um, look and feel, like for instance, if you would lead this this way that, you know, it's a softer image, whereas the other one has a little bit more retro, what I would call describe or describe as a pinup um, yeah. kind of vibe to it, you know, like the, the old fashioned tattoos or, you know, that yes. kind of work. It was actually, I was just thinking it kind of reminded me of like the patches that they used to put on varsity jackets. It kind of sure. has that vibe to it, especially yeah. with the primary colors. So I'm just following along the edge of where my paint is here. And um, there's a little tiny bit of the, the graphite from the transfer showing through um, where I didn't paint all the way up to that edge. So the marker hides that really well. Um, and as Molly said in the video, if you paint over your pencil or your transfer um, graphite, it will stay. Like the paint will basically um, cure it and hold it in place. But if you have any on your clean white paper, you might be able to get it to come up a little bit with the eraser. Well, and I know graphite can smear, like, you know, it can be, you can smear it easily, but it doesn't seem like, or else you've been very careful. It hasn't done that on your paper. So I'm assuming this might be a slightly different graphite than I'm used to. Yeah. yeah. On the Once it's transferred onto the page, it actually stays in place really well. Um, there are a couple places, and I don't think the camera is going to pick it up, especially since I erased it, but there's a couple little places where the paper was sitting, the transfer side was sitting on this paper in the bag, and it did give me just a few lines in a couple gotcha. of places, but... Stacey yep. does have a question too, um, Rachel. Is the paper made for watercolors that we handed out? Um, this, I'm not entirely sure what this paper is. It feels like a cardstock or maybe, maybe like a hot press paper. Um, I will say for watercolors specifically, I prefer a paper with a little bit more of a texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is kind of more of a general use paper and they make more specialized paper for watercolor. Um, the reason being with watercolor, especially because it is thinner and more translucent, it will um, kind of sit on top of the paper in a different way than the gouache, if that makes sense. Um, it, to me, it's, it's harder to place the paint and get it to stay where you want it. It seems like it's more prone to, to kind of smearing or running or blending than if you have like purpose-made watercolor paper. I hope that helps. <laughs> so yeah, I think you can kind of see here oh, my edge, great. my top edge is a little bit uneven, but I'm going to go ahead and just hide that with my thick pin here. As long as I can get my pen to draw in a straight line here. There we go. I'm just going to follow this line around. According to Anna, this is hot press watercolor paper. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it has the nice smooth finish of hot press paper. Yeah, I like... resources in the room. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I prefer... 
myself and of course everyone is different and I, I know some artists really like the hot press paper I like the the cold press for watercolor specifically but people have created all kinds of cool things on all kinds of interesting papers so and when Rachel's still finishing that up I just wanted to let everybody know too the next crafty adults will be making medieval manuscripts um and this will be happening um in October. So Wednesday, October 13th at 6.30. Um, this is in partnership with the U of, I Rare, U of I's Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Um, registration for this particular class and is at 9 a.m. on October 1st. Um, I will say they have been so generous. Um, we will be able to um, have plenty of seating, I feel like. Um, the class is called Making Medieval Manuscripts. Um, and some mouthful for me to say there, but um, that should be on the calendar and there's more details provided. It is really, it's, it's kind of a cool throwback arts and craft, um, you know, October. I don't it know. seems like it's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah they're going to talk and, about old paper and. Yeah. And like, you'll get a lot of, I was going to say, they'll be able to provide so much his, history and just uh, information about the products and things like that that will be used that um, I don't know if you've if anyone has joined um, any program we've had with the rare book uh, and manuscript museum they're fantastic um, wonderful resource and just a great group to work with that looks awesome all right I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here um, are there any other questions about any of the techniques that I've used or any of the, you know, the blending or the outlining or any of the process so far? So far, so good. Okay. In the chat room, at least. And no questions, no open questions. Excellent. Yeah, I feel like I maybe got a little over ambitious with my blending, so I don't want to try to finish this tonight and make you guys watch that. But I will tell you, it is, it's well on its way to becoming this. So that's what it'll look like once it's finished. Um, Trisha, did you want to offer the chance for folks to show yeah, what they've me, been working on? I'd love to see what other folks absolutely. came up with. Absolutely. Let, let Trisha get back to, um, I'm going to remove your spotlight for just a minute. That's great. I'm going to switch off of the camera and back to me. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to be looking in the wrong direction because I have too many things open. And here we go. Okay. I don't even see me. So if I'm on the camera, wonderful. If I'm not, that's also great. Okay. I can see you. You're there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if anyone has, would like to share. Um, Looks like Dee is ready, she says. Excellent, Dee. All right. Bear with me, Dee. We're going to get this. I'm going to promote you to panelists. That should allow you to... Um, whoa, 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 where'd you go? Oh, Janet, I accidentally made you a panelist as well. So, <laughs> excellent. All right. Let me unmute. There she is. Yeah. All right. Dee, did I allow oh, you? Oh, nice. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it looks like she might be muted still. I like what you did, though, with the moving the, the ribbon down a little bit so you can see the rose, the leaves of the rose more. Oh, I have, I might be in gallery view. That might be why I can see her. So try switching to gallery view if you're not in gallery view already. Where do I see that? Here you there go. you Wonderful. are. Oh, yay. Oh, that's, I like that. Nana. Nana. <laughs> Nana. Okay. And, and I'm a, a line eye fan, obviously, orange and blue. Very nice, very nice, Dee. I like the way you outlined the flower, the, <laughs> the rose, too. Nice. All right, is everybody able to see if they go to gallery view? I know there's a lot of options with Zoom. It can get kind of confusing. So, all right. Excellent, excellent. All right, anybody else want to share? Okay, I have mine. All right. Yeah. Yes, Janet, I kind of forced you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No problem. I don't, I can't see what I'm showing, so. Um, I'm not seeing your video. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I just that saw. Isn't... 
hang on, let me give me just a minute, make sure I've allowed you to. Okay, join us panelists. There we go. We'll get there. Oh, switch to gallery, okay. I still can't see myself, but. Um, Do you have your camera on in the bottom corner next to your microphone where it says just, video? Just look at that. There, there you, you go. Are. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I love the okay. leaves. I like what you did with those leaves. My grandson, uh, so we'll celebrate the Olympics with him when he comes this weekend. That's awesome. <laughs> I love those leaves. I like what you did with them. Thank you. All right, Lisa's got, I promoted to panelists. You should be able to, to join. Hi, Lisa. Oh, oh my gosh, wow. that's beautiful. I ended she's up, even trimmed it all up. She I know. Some <laughs> markers. And I, okay. I might do something like this. But anyway, I had some watercolor markers that I wanted to try. So I didn't use the paints that you provided. Here's the paper. Oh, kitty. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I did um, some of my watercolors and some of those pens, watercolor pens, I mean, sorry. Nice. That turned out really well. Yeah. No, I love that idea, though. If, if, you know, if we're working on something and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to do that, but it inspired me to try something else. That's great. I love that you yeah. did that. Um, all right. Anybody else? Last call for anybody that wants to show their, their masterpiece. All right. Stacy, I let me find you. If you guys could only see what I'm seeing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to promote you to panelists, and you should be able to share. I think. Here it she is. You guys can't see me? I no, can't good. see you yet, but sometimes it's... There you are. There you are. Um, mine's not done yet. Oh, but that's great. Oh, I like that. I should have, that's a great idea, the rose and the crest. That looks yeah. really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> and we got some quite some artists. Okay, we've got Jess to share. Jess, let me find you, Jess. Why aren't you letting me in? <laughs> I just want to say too, while we're doing this, thank you all who are being brave and sharing. It's so yeah. fun to see how you guys have interpreted this and, and the different ways that you put together what we gave you. So thank you. Well, and it's, it's, you know, it's, um, you know, part of the, in the joy of having these is the seeing other spaces and seeing, um, you know, what we're doing. So it's nice that we can have that engagement at the end. Just, oh, yes. There we go. There she is. Hello. Oh, I like the bold colors. Nice. Those are my son's initials. Okay. That's great. Nice. Everybody yes. looks so nice and neat. That was, that's very neat. All right. Okay, last call. <laughs> All right. Well, and you can always, you know, tag us in Instagram if you want to finish your project and um, show us. And Dee is saying your instructions were very clear. And um, oh, I you. have to say, Rachel, you, you knocked it out of the park for stepping <laughs> in. So I, you did great. Um, wonderful job tonight. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Rachel, do you have any final parting thoughts before we wrap it up? I do not. I just want to say thanks for letting me fill in and thanks for painting and doing this project with me. Excellent. Um, and again, if you have any questions about Creative Bug or have trouble accessing, don't hesitate to call the library or send us an email. You can reach us several different ways, obviously. The librarian um, at champagne.org, also info, I-N-F-O at champagne.org will all um, get to our department here so we can help you. Um, you can give us a call or stop by the, the reference desk at the second um, floor. So we're always eager to help and answer questions any way we can. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go on to your evening. It is right before 8.30, so we, we did a good job on time. So thank you all, and um, have a great night. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank you. You're welcome.